good to see our kids up front. This is going to be a great, great day. I want to also remind everybody that on Wednesday starts our potluck dinner and our refueling. Let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our most precious, precious God, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for this day, this beautiful sunny day you've given us again today, Lord. Lord, as the fall season comes upon us, when the leaves change to their glorious colors, we know that you are the creator. You are the God that created everything as you paint the trees. Dear Lord, be with our service today. Be with Professor Steve. Watch over us. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with us?
all here in the house of the Lord this morning. And nice to see you. Well, nearly full house uh, here at Corner House today. Uh, we just finished up last week 30 months worth of outdoor 940 worship services. Uh, and now we've come inside with a boom. And so the Apostle Paul uh, said, when I was a child, I, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to put some childish things back on, all right? Because in Christ's eyes, in God's eyes, if you read the New Testament, we are all children. We're all children of God. As a matter of fact, so today, if you are 80 years old, anybody here 80 years or older? You're 80 years or older, I give you permission to take the zero off the eight. This morning, you are eight years old. If you are 70 years old today, I give you permission to take the zero off the seven. This morning, you become seven years old. Now, let me ask, how many eight-year-olds do we have out there today? Raise your hands if you are now an eight-year-old. If you're now a seven-year-old, uh, how about a six-year-old? Are you now a five-year-old? <laughs> you know what I mean, all right? I'm just always going to stay 22. Is that okay? <laughs> You're a what? Oh, she's a one-year-old now. All right, now we have a one-year-old. All right, that's okay. All right. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, let the little children come unto me and forbid them not, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And, and so this morning, without further ado, the gentleman I'm about to introduce uh, has done numerous school presentations, numerous library, public library presentations uh, with this message. Uh, he's gone into teacher training opportunities and, of course, church and camps and vacation Bible schools. And he hails all the way from Lebanon, Indiana. Would you please give it up with a, with a very loud clap of applause. You can do it loud. Go home and do your 
magic shows. And here's the cool thing. I love magic shows. I love magic shows. But what's the deal with a magic show and magicians? Lots and lots of secrets. Magicians don't have special powers. They have secrets. And if they tell you their secret, well, then they have nothing. Listen, there are no secrets. I'm going to show you some of the most amazing stuff you have ever seen. You say, Professor Steve, well, I think it's amazing. Oh, yes. I mean, look, I got toilet paper. <laughs> if you went woo, you should get out more. Okay, so, so, so I, I, I'm going to show you amazing stuff, not lame stuff that you'll see in a book like a book of, of, of amazing stuff kids can do. No, 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 no. Everything I'm going to show you, you can go home and do yourself. And I want you to. So there are no secrets. But here's the deal. You've got to keep your eyes glued on this. Because if you miss the one key thing that makes it work, it's not going to work for you. But I'm going to show you amazing stuff that you can go home and do with mom and dad, grandma and grandma. And, and the main thing, I want to have fun with you. Because, because science is fun. Does that sound good? Yeah. Well, one more thing that I want to make sure we know, and I'm pretty sure that I'm preaching to the choir here. Science is fun. Science is amazing. Science is awesome. Best part of all, science comes from God. Do you agree with that? <laughs> is God real? Yes. Is God amazing? Yes. Is God powerful? Yes. Does God love us? Yes. Does God want to give us gifts? Yes. yes, and he is so amazing. Yesterday we learned about the universe, how we can't even wrap our brains around how big the the universe is, but God just spoke it, and there it was. And then we dealt with electricity. Oh, man, you are going to be so sad if you weren't here yesterday. Because not only did we talk about electricity and sparks and flashes, there was even an explosion, a planned one, where I shot a cork and we, I hit the back wall. Beautiful. I dare you to find the dip. I dare you to find a dip. You just won't. It's so small. Um, I had my Tesla coil here yesterday. Spin now 750,000 volts. 12 inch lightning spark. See, see what you missed. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. That is the power of God. We are going to deal with the power here. And, uh, you know, I got a verse. I can, there are so many verses I could read, but this one fits with everything. So, Jeremiah, O Lord God, it is you who made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. God is amazing. God is awesome. God loves us. God gave us science because he wants to show his love. All right, that's enough talking about that. You ready to see amazing stuff? Yeah! All right, today we are going to learn about things that push and pull you around. Not your brother or sister. No, they don't get no program. No, we're going to learn about amazing things that are there. You can't see them, but you see what they do. Forces. What is a force? Oh, maybe it pushes you. Maybe it pulls you. Maybe it shoves you to the side. Maybe it grabs onto you. <laughs> Maybe it does that. But only after going to the Taco Bell. <laughs> Pay no attention to the fact that I did a gross thing and licked my hands before I did that. We'll cut that out in editing. We are going to learn about some of the forces that you know about, some you have never heard about, and the great thing every time I tell you about something, I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, that's enough, Gavin. Yeah. You ready to see something? Yeah. All right, so let's start out with an experiment that you can do when you go home. First thing, when you go home, ask mom if you can borrow a roll of toilet paper. Do not go in the bathroom and take the toilet paper. Your father, who spends most of his life in the bathroom, will <laughs> get upset. So you say, Mother, may I please have a roll of toilet paper? Now, you'll have the toilet paper in your hand. You will notice he's got a tail. Did you notice that? Yeah. He's got a tail. Don't mock him. He knows he has a tail. 
Here's what you're going to do when you go home later. You're going to take that roll of toilet paper. You're going to hold it up by your face. Maybe give it a little kissy poo. You say, why would I do that? As a thank you for a job well done. <laughs> a horrible, nasty, terrible job. Thank you for that. He does it and you don't have to. All right, so here's what you're going to do. You'll take this toilet paper, tail over the top. You will blow as hard as you can right across the top. Why? To splatter mom's mirror? That's terrible. Don't do that and wipe it off if you do. No, here's the deal. You're going to blow straight across. Because about 300 years ago, there was a scientist by the name of Daniel Bernoulli. Say his name. Daniel Bernoulli. Mr. Bernoulli was a scientist, and he found out something. When air moves, it makes low pressure. The faster it moves, the lower the pressure. You say, Professor Steve, why do I care? If you're in an airplane, you care. That's how airplanes fly. The weather, that's how it works. And this is how you're going to do the seemingly impossible. By blowing across the top, you are going to be making low pressure. The air below will lift. That tail's going to stick straight out. You want to see? Yeah. All right, I'll show you. So you're at home, you got the toilet paper. Fill your lungs with air. Just like that. <laughs> Aim across the top and blow. And you should get this. <sighs> When you do this, if you're feeling especially gassy, you can make the tail longer. But are you going to have to blow harder or softer? Harder. Yes, harder. Look, the tail's longer. I need lower pressure for the air to lift. You don't want to see me do that now, though, do you? Yes. No, no, you just do it at home. You don't want me to do that. Right? But I'm old. My lungs might pop out. Don't cry. 
You're not babies. No. Ask Grandma and Grandpa. If they don't have a leaf blower, they will go buy one for you. Well, I would, but I'm an awesome grandpa. All right. So let's see. Oh, one more thing. Do not use the thing that you use to dry your hair with in the morning, unless this is what you use to dry your hair with in the morning. So, number two, I think that's everything. Okay, so let's see. Number one, you're at home, you get these things, all three of them. Number one, you get the toilet paper, check. Number two, you get the leaf blower, check. No, I forgot. Number three, you knew, you, you, you knew I did, didn't you? Yeah, you didn't say a thing. Number three, an official toilet paper holder. Oh no, oh no. I forgot the official toilet paper holder. But you know what? This church has everything. Beautiful speckly lights that I can't see now. Um, hanging lights, you guys, it has everything. And, uh, and, and and if you know where to look, you can find it. I snoozed, I mean looked around. I found it. Right here. Exactly what I need. There it is. An official toilet paper holder. Well, somebody was using it. I had to wait till they were finished. But they did. And now it's mine! Now who? I got something on me. Oh no. Oh no. I was flicking it all cavalierly. Did anybody get something on them? Oh no! Oh no! You want my hanky? You want my hanky? No. Well, just a minute. Oh, listen, listen! Don't worry. It was a joke. Only I thought it was funny. Um, no. I brought this with me. It's a brand new plunger. I put it back there. I put the water in it. I put it there. Brand new. Do you believe me? No. Yes. All right, wait, 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 Dallas. If it wasn't brand new, would I do that? Yes. If it wasn't brand new, would I do that? Yes. If it wasn't brand new, would I do this? Brand new. So listen, when you do this, don't take that nasty thing in the bathroom. No, no. Listen, listen. Use a dowel rod. Use the end of a broom. Use, uh, or just say, go, go to Santa early and say, Santa, I only want one thing this year for Christmas. My very own toilet plunger. Whatever you want to do. Just be healthy, be clean, don't use nasty. All right. Well, let me show you how you're going to do this. So you're at home. You got your three items. You'll take the official toilet paper holder, you'll take Mr. Toilet Paper, you will find his belly button. I'll give you a clue. It's an any. Right there. Take Mr. Toilet Paper, slide him on the end just like that, put your little finger right here, go outside, fire up that bad boy, get it across the top, low pressure, airless. Oh, you ready to see this? Yeah. All right. When the toilet paper comes to visit you, aren't you sad you're sitting in the back row? When it comes to visit you, number one, don't eat it. Number two, don't blow your nose in it. And number three, don't throw it. Oh, the adults will get all upset. No, oh, just take the toilet paper, set it down, we'll pick it up later. Other than that, you ready to be amazed? Yeah. All right, toilet paper, check. Lean lower, check. On.
Oh, you've lost a lot of weight, buddy. Oh, you're of no use to me now. <laughs> Guys, God has made, made forces. Forces are things that work on other things. Pushing, pulling. What do we have here? We have air that touched the toilet paper. That's got a special name. That is what we call a contact force. Say that for me. Contact. If it touches, it's a contact force. Air on paper. Contact. My feet on the floor. Contact. My stuff on the table. Contact. It all is touching. But God is so smart, he gave us another kind of force. It's called a distant force. Say that for me. Things that aren't even touching, for example. Magnets. Now look at this. Look at this. I, yep, I'm looking at these. I've seen it in half. Oh, you know magnets. You've seen magnets. You're very smart. You know this. Uh, every magnet has a North Pole and a South Pole. And who lives in the North Pole? See? How smart you are. Now, here's the deal. If, if the poles are the same, what do the magnets do? They repel. They push away. Now, now, now look. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. I can see it with my eyes. I can't touch it. I can't smell it. <coughs> I can't taste it. But there it is. That is a distant force. Of course, if the poles are different, what do they do? They attract. They stick together. That is a definition of a distant force. i got another one for you. Oh, it's a force that holds you down. Keeps you from flying off the spinning earth. Starts with the letter G. We're not going to spend much time on gravity. I'm just going to tell you one thing about gravity. Gravity, we know what it is. It's the force that holds us down to the earth or any planet. We know that the bigger the planet, the more the gravity pulls down. The smaller the planet, the less. If you're going to overeat, don't do it on the earth. Do it on the moon. Because you are so much lighter on the moon. That's what we know. But why do we not have nice things like flying DeLoreans and uh, hoverboards? Not those Amazon hoverboards that burst into flame. No, Michael J. Fox commemorative hoverboards. Why not? Because gravity doesn't seem to follow the rules. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what an elephant is? Do you know what a mouse is? Yeah. Which one is bigger? Elephant. Which one's heavier? Mouse. Mouse. Don't be a fat mouse. All right, so, so here's the deal. Elephant. Okay, so you go to a swimming pool. You bring your buddies, the elephant and the mouse. They get on the high dive. You say, when I blow my whistle, you will both jump into the pool. You blow it, they come down. Which one is going to hit the water first, the elephant or the mouse? Yell it out. The elephant. You know what? The reason I asked that question, about 2,000-some years ago, there was a very famous teacher named Aristotle. They said he was the smartest person in the world. They asked him that question. Aristotle, elephant, mouse, which one falls to us? Aristotle thought about it and he said, that's so easy. I'm so smart. My big old brain, I know the answer. The elephant, the, the heavier something is, the faster it falls. People said, that makes sense. You know that makes sense when you're lugging in a great big thing of kitty litter or a big old thing of food. You know that that's going to fall and hit your foot much faster than a small item. For 1,700 years, nobody questioned it. And then along <laughs> came a little Italian scientist named Galileo. Say his name. Yeah. Who did a very famous experiment. He went to the town he was born in in Italy. He went to a tower that leans. He, while his friends watch below, he drops stuff from the top. We'll do that here. Let's start with these. That's it. Look the same, are the same, feel the same. Drop these, which one's going to hit the ground first? No, even Aristotle would say that. Three, two, one, drop, just like that. However, no one had done different stuff. Ah, Mr. Galileo did. Let's take this one. <coughs> Let's trade, oh, here. We'll trade it in for something small. Let's take this one. Let, oh, I know what. Bigger, heavier. Aristotle would say, oh, I know what's going to happen. That guy is going to fall much faster, much quicker. But does it? No, because when God invented gravity, he made it so it treats everybody the same. 
three, two, one drop. Exactly the same. That doesn't make any sense, but that's what it is. Let's do it one more time. Let's do it one more time. Let's keep the baby, but let's trade in, oh, I know, five pounds of steel. Which one is heavier? This one? This one? which one I should drop. And gravity said, oh, Professor Steve, I really don't care. Because when God made me, he made me to treat everyone and everything exactly the same. Three, two, one, drop. Exactly the same. How does it work? I don't know. Why does it work that way? I don't know. But we don't need to worry about it. We just know that God gave it to us. Wait! You see the silver ball? Yes. Is it moving? Yes. Why is it not moving? Then what if I push it with my foot? Will it move? Yes. Yeah, it should. Let's try that. Push it with the foot. Is it moving? Yes. Why is it moving? And then, and then, oh wait, friction? No, is it moving now? No. Why is it not moving? Because God gave us another force, an amazing force. It is called inertia. Say that for me. You say, Professor Steve, you are so wise and smart. What could you teach us what it is? I will. No. Repeat after me. Objects that are moving, objects that are moving, I will come out and make you say it from the start. Objects that are moving, objects that are moving, want to keep moving, want to keep moving, objects that are resting. Objects that are resting. Want to keep resting. Want to keep resting. That's it. If something's moving, it doesn't want to quit. And if something is resting, it doesn't want to go. Man, that makes me hungry. If there was only some food up here, and I look everywhere, and no, that's called a guitar. I don't need guitars. That's called a bus stand. No, that's called a stand. I knew I smelled it. That is awesome. Let's see here. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, look at this. More food than I could eat in a lifetime. You know, I'm going to do this. I like the clock better than me. More food than I could eat in a lifetime. Should I share it with you? No. Yeah. You would think so, but no. It's all for me. Ah! Let's see, what do I got here? What do I got here? Oh, oh, I got everything here. What is this? I got burgers. I got, ooh, corn on the cob. Arr, 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 ding. Arr, 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 ding. Arr, 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 ding. That was for the adults. Let's see, what else do I got? Ooh, and fruit. Fruit. Do you like fruit? Yes. Strawberries. Do you like strawberries? I believe they are. Talented strawberry. Wow. Oh, I know. oh wait, cake! Cake! I'll eat you now, cake. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh! You can't have my cake. Let's see. Oh wait, something to drink. Something to drink. I could have coffee. I could have tea. I could have soda pop. Wait, when you are thirsty, does your body want coffee? No. no. Does your body want tea? No. Yes. Does your body want soda pop? Yes. Absolutely no. That's how you get this. <laughs> Soon to be my little baby. And I got a twin. Right here. <laughs> Guys, no! God made you three quarters water. When you are thirsty, you need to keep the water level up. And if you are old like Professor Steve and you want to lose a few pounds, I'm going to give you the secret right here. Because if you don't drink your water, your body's going to think you're in the desert. The body's going to think you have no access to anything like this. And it's going to slow your already creepingly slow metabolism. Guys, you need to drink your water. Oh, no. Oh, no. Glad you asked. Uh, I didn't want to put the stuff back on the table. I wanted to put the stuff over here 
so I can get the cloth and have a picnic. I, uh, I, I don't have time to move it again. Well, there's only one thing I know to do. <laughs> Grab that hair cloth and whip it. Whip it good. Take that cloth, pull it out, leave the food, leave the cake, leave the water. Would you like to see that? Yes. Would you like to learn how to do that? Because yes. nothing will make mom or dad proud. <laughs> You'll be able to do it at home, at restaurants, at family gatherings. I'm going to show you how. All right, I'm only doing it once. So don't be talking on your phone. No, you pay attention or you'll miss it. All right. And, and, and if, I mean, when it works, I'll show you how it was done. All right, are you guys ready? Yes. Watch this. You must have complete silence. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. It might not work. And we might end up with broken plates and talented strawberries and water and up on the floor. Are you willing to take the risk? Yes! I'm so proud of you. Well, then let's do it! Let's do it! Complete silence. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm so proud of you for taking the risk. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one more thing. One more thing. You say you're willing to take the risk. What exactly are you willing to do to take the risk? Because you're going to rat me out if I mess it up. Yeah, see, you see. So listen, here's the deal we're going to do. We're going to all work together. That way, if it doesn't work, I can blame you. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get ready. When I tell you to, you are going to start counting. Oh, I'm going to make it tough on you, too. You're going to go five, four, Three, two, one, and which time I will pull the cloth. Are you guys ready? Yeah. You know what? I think that you should start counting. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes! Now, it's not a trick. There's no magnets. There's nothing. You can do this. You're going to use one thing, inertia. Objects that are resting, what do they want to do? So here's the deal, here's the deal. That food doesn't want to go anywhere. That cake doesn't want the water. So you've got to make sure you don't cause it to move. There are three secrets. People that say they love you will only tell you two, and because they're fizzy. I am going to tell you all three secrets because you would do this. I guarantee it'll work. It has never not worked for me. And, and even the very first time I ever did it, it worked. I'm going to show you what to do. First of all, do you see my tablecloth? It's not a tablecloth. It's a cloth for a table. You say, what's the difference? If I go to Walmart, and I go to the tablecloth section, and I buy a beautiful tablecloth, oh, it's lovely. It sits there. It grips my table so it won't fall off. Do I want a cloth that grips the table? No, no I can't even afford a four-legged table. So, guys, this is a piece of regular cloth. That's secret one. Secret two. Did you watch me pull the cloth? Yeah. Did I pull slow or fast? Yeah. Here's the deal. First of all, the mental part. Don't say to yourself, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because guess what? It won't. You'll back off. No, you tell yourself it is going to work. Because it is going to work. It is going to work. And you grab that cloth and you pull it as fast as you can. If you back off, it'll go too slow and it'll end up moving because of friction. Guys, I pull out and slightly down and I pull as fast as I can, knowing it's going to work. That's secret two. Now, let me tell you the third secret. When you put your cloth on and uh, yeah, put stuff on top of the cloth too, just in case you're confused. Alright, when you put the cloth on there, that would look beautiful just like that. You know, nice cloth hanging in the background. And I'll tell you what, I pulled the cloth and it's not going to work. Because the same thing to make the toilet paper fly is going to cause this to wrap itself under. You're going to pull the whole table off. No, here's the big secret that no one wants to tell you. I do. When you put the cloth on there, make sure, uh, make sure that there is just a couple inches 
hanging off the back. Nobody will care. Nobody, but that way by the time this is gone, it hasn't had a chance to close underneath. Guys, you can do this. And every time you do this, you're learning about inertia. Objects that are resting, what they keep resting. What about objects that are moving? What do they want to do? No! Guys, here's the deal. When you get in a car, don't ask mom and dad or whoever's driving. Don't ask them if you have to get in your car seat or if you have to put on your seatbelt. Why? Why? Because of the police? Is that why you're wearing it? No. You're wearing it because you're smart. You're wearing it because uh, you know about inertia and that how objects that are moving, they want to keep moving. You're sitting in a car. The car's not moving. Neither are you. You're going the same. You get in there, you're, you start going 30 miles an hour, 35. You are going 35. And then mom and dad slam on the brakes, and you keep going 35. This is why you need something holding your back. And you're on the interstate going 55, 60, 65, 70. And then mom and dad accidentally hit a deer or another car or slam on the brakes. And you are going to shoot forward faster than most of you. Throw a ball. This is how people get hurt. Guys, I love you guys. I want you to be safe. So here's the deal. You're smart. You know about inertia. You wear the seatbelt. Why? Because objects that are resting, you want to keep resting. And objects like you, they want to keep moving. Will you remember that? Yeah. All right. Let me check the clock here. Oh, I'm almost done. Which is sad for me because I had a great weekend with you guys. But, um, all right, you ready to see the last very important thing? Yeah. All right, when I was in school, grade school, I had a great science teacher. And we learned about something called centrifugal force, an outward pulling force. When I wrote this show about 12 years ago and put that in, in my reading, guess what I found out? There is no centrifugal force. I know, adults, some of you are looking at me, giving me the skunk eye. Because you learned about, no, there is, it's called an imaginary force. Then what is there then? It's called centripetal force, with a P. Sounds alike, but it's different. Centrifugal force pulls away. Centripetal towards you. You say, Professor Steve, I believe you are wrong. Haven't you ever taken a bucket? Haven't you ever put some water in it? Haven't you ever gone out? Yeah, don't do this indoors. Are you nuts? No, don't do it indoors. Haven't you ever put some water in it and go outside and do that? There's a force pulling the water away from you. No, it is your arm pulling the bucket toward you. There is no centrifugal. There's centripetal. Oh, I forgot. I don't like this bucket. I like the color, but uh, you know why I don't like this bucket? Can you see the water? No. See, that's it. Maybe there's no water. Can you see it better now? No. Uh, well, wait, wait. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? See what? See it? Yeah. So here's the deal. Luckily for you, I'm super smart. Yeah. And I have invented the newest in bucket technology. Throw out your old buckets and embrace the new. I call it Professor Steve's sideless bucket or plate on a rope. That greatest invention ever. No, there it is. There it is. Now see if I put the water in this. Now you're going to see it. Oh, I am so smart. Wait, I invented something else too. Anybody spill their milk? Anybody spill their water? Guess what I invented? Spilled from the cup. Oh, here, here's one. All right, I took a spilly cup. I went to Walmart, went to the craft section. I bought some stuff called craft foam. It's on a sheet, it's beautiful colors. I cut a circle, I glued it. It's not sticky, but it just keeps it from sliding. Problems? Problems?
more weight. I know. Let's add some water. Oh, this is much better. Now it won't do that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Now look. Now you can see it. Now you can see the water. Now, here's the deal. Since I know there's no outward force, all I need to do to make sure that I don't spill it is always pull toward me. Oh, no. No, no, no. It's not stuck on there. It just keeps it from sliding. And as long as I pull toward me and... Uh, oh, I know what you're thinking. If he's really good, all the way over. If I can do that, can you clap really loud? Then let's do it. Big finale. Here we go. Here we go. Three... Two, one. Wait, you want something extra? Oh, I know. Let's add another cup. Let's add another cup. If one, if one is good, two will be better. Oh, look at this. Oh, I want to tell you guys, you could not have been nicer. I have had such a good time. David, man, he's fed me, you know, like, like a little, like a baby bird. He dropped the food in my mouth. It was lovely. And uh, I have had such a good time, and I even went to Pennsylvania, so I'm an international traveler. And uh, oh, look at this. Look at this. If I can do this. You gonna clap for the last one? Here we go, here we go, the big finale. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wait! You want something extra? Oh, I know. Let's add another I bought a plate. I drilled three holes in it. Oh, this is going to be tough. I need to get them all on there. I drilled three holes, and, and, and I want to tell you, even the very first time I ever did this, it worked. It's worked ever since. Let me see if I can pick this up. Oh, man, three times. Oh. If I can do this, you going to clap really loud? Yeah. All right. All right, the big finale. Here we go. Here we go. Three... Two, one. Wait. You want something extra? I know. Let's add another cup. Oh, so here's the deal. God is smart. God is created. God loves us. God gave us science and brains. All the tools you need to do amazing, fun, awesome stuff. That's what's fun. Oh no. Oh no. Glad you asked. I forgot. Last week I changed plates for this plate. It was much bigger. This is much smaller. I am. Um, don't really have room. Well, I guess I'm going to have to build up. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh my God. Maybe that's fine. I'm not liking this. Let's see if I can even pick it up. Guys, I can do this. You gonna clap really loud? Yeah. Oh. Listen, just in case I run off because it doesn't work, drying my hair and crying because I let you down. Let me tell you right now, you have been, you have been so nice to me. Thank you for the chance to share with you guys. And uh, I love you all. And, and if by any chance you hear that I'm coming back, you will know something. I'll be just as good looking. I'll have just as much hair. And the deal, it'll be brand new program. All right, that's all I got. You ready to see this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Three.
Science is amazing. Science is awesome. Thank you for the chance to come and share science with you. in a sermon on a Sunday morning. Sometimes we hear it in a lesson in our children's classes or adult classes. Sometimes we just read it in the Bible and we are amazed over and over again. And sometimes we can come together uh, and laugh uh, and that be the message. It all goes back to the cross of Christ. It all goes back to the fact that Jesus came for children Jesus lived for children. Jesus died for children. And someday, he's coming back again for all his children. All right, let's pray. This is an invitation time. That means we're real quiet before God. And in our hearts, we're asking God to challenge us through this message. Uh, and for us to remember when we're in school or we're in class, we're hearing about these amazing science things and projects. It all comes from the hands of God. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful. This is a time of invitation. Lord, we're grateful for the talent of Steve Walton. Lord, we're thankful that you brought us ministry in a new look today. That, Father, we heard the gospel in the challenge that we lift you up and thank you, God, for this world that we live in, the things that we take for granted, like gravity and centrifugal force and centrifugal force and all of these forces that are out there that you've provided by the handiwork of God. Lord, I pray now as each, each of us make a decision that we make a decision only for you in the name of Christ. Amen. This is a prayer time. You can come down front during this song as we prepare for communion. We ask you to do some unique prayer today. Come on down if you want to receive Jesus uh, by our message today. If you want to talk to me about, about uh, receiving Jesus as your Savior, let's stand, stand, stand together.
our God is great. He gave us a gift. I'm going to read from the book of John in the first chapter, where his gift is announced. As John the Baptist was in the wilderness preaching, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came up and they asked him, Are you Elijah? Are you the Christ or a prophet? Why do you baptize people? John answered, I baptize with water, but there is one with that. But there is one here that you don't know about. He is the one who comes after me. I then I am not good enough to untie his sandals. This happened in Bethany on the other side of the Jordan. Then later that day, John saw Jesus coming. John said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I was talking about. The man, a man will come after me, and he is greater than I, because he is living before me. This is our Christ. This is our Christ that came to die. As we take our communion today, let's remember that. Christ came to die for us so that we can live our sins on the cross. We don't need to carry them every day. They're gone. They're washed away. Let's pretend.
those that are sick, those that are shut in and in need of an extra loving hand. Shall we bow our heads, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those, those that are in need of an extra portion of grace. That would include Pete and Connie James, Alec and Amy, also the David Brandon family, the Amber Bell family, and Steve Walton's ministry. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you are the supplier of all our needs. The flowers of the field and the birds of the air do not wonder where their substance comes from, nor should we. We know that you are the author of creation, the author of all the forces that govern creation. You knit us together in our mother's womb. Through you all things were made and are held together, and we pray for an extra blessing for those that we just mentioned. Dear Heavenly Father, lift up Steve's ministry, knit together those that need physical healing. Lift up the spirits of those that are in mourning, and embrace those that are in need of your loving hand. We know that in your word, it says that you are God and that God is love. Thank you for the love you've given each one of us and fill us to overflowing with your spirit that we would share this love with those around us. Give an uplift, uplifting word to those that are in need of it. Give a helping hand to those that are in need of it as your hands and feet. Thank you for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with us because... 